Manuel Marquez, outstanding featherweight, can't miss, they say. This youngster's headed for a championship. He's in against a veteran who will prove to be a real trial and a test for this young man, Freddy Cruz. Here's Freddy Cruz coming up the aisle now. Looks fit and ready to go, Rich Murata. Well, this is a good fighter, Tom. 5'7", 126 and a half. 34 years old. His last fight, February 12th. He lost a 12-round decision to Jesse Magana. But that was a very close fight. He fought very well. He was down twice in that fight, the second and the seventh rounds. And that was the difference in the scoring. He lost by two points on the cards. This is a good fighter. He's been a professional since 1986 and overcame really a very horrible start in his career to prove himself a quality, world-class type fighter. There he is, Freddy Cruz. Jesse Magana had the same kind of a start in his career. Freddie Pendleton did, too. Yet they persevered. Mike Magana, they say, is in line for a shot at Marco Antonio Barrera. If the fates uh, see it that way. And here's a young man that they say is every bit as good as, or will be, as good as Marco Antonio Barrera. You're looking at Juan Manuel Marquez. And I lost think his first fight in a disqualification. He's won 15 in a row since then. And I think what we're all interested in seeing, as you see his advisor, Rafael Mendoza, along with trainer Nacho Berestein right behind him, was that fight, Tom, against Julio Gervasio, which was a brilliant, almost flawless, dominant performance. Was that some type of a freak that night, or was that really what this kid is going to offer us fight after fight? Well, part of that will be shown here tonight. Well, in earlier comments, when he talked with Fernando Paramo, why uh, he was quick to point out that whatever Berestein decides is going to be fine with him. If he uh, says that we need three, four, or five more fights, that's all right with uh, Juan uh, Manuel Marquez. Jimmy Lennon Jr. will introduce these two fine fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present our featured attraction of the evening at this time, I'd like to ask you to rise for the singing of our national anthem. In the ring at this time to lead us, my pleasure to introduce you the fine young trio vocalists. How about a hand for Chanteuse Monet? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight or the rain. Monet. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and 
and boxing fans joining us across the nation on Prime, we welcome you to the featured attraction of the evening brought to you by Forum Boxing Incorporated and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman William Eastman, vice chairman Willie Buchanan. Our judges scoring this bout from ringside, Lou Moret, Fritz Werner, and Gwen Adair, and a referee in charge of this bout. Out, Chuck Hassett. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, a featherweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks and joining us from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at 126 and one half pounds. His record includes 49 wins, nine losses, and seven draws, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the always tough and clever Freddy Italo Cruz. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, this 10-round main event, wearing blue trunks with red trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at 126 and one half pounds. His outstanding record includes 15 wins, one loss, with 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the young featherweight sensation, introducing Juan Manuel. Once again, a referee in charge, Chuck Hassett. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Let me see your mouthpiece. All right, you've had your instructions, gentlemen. Touch gloves. Let us work. All right, the tail of the tape, Marquez, the uh, can't miss. At 5'7", so is Cruz. 126 and a half, and so is Cruz. Marquez is 22, and Cruz is 12 years older. And Cruz has two inches advantage in the rich department. It is indeed a can't-miss youngster of great potential and promise against a crafty veteran who's had 49 wins, eight losses, and seven draws. That's Cruz in the black and Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. Cruz is a guy who knows all the uh, tricks in the ring, and he'll probably need them tonight against Marquez because Marquez has just been developing uh, so fast. Now, Juan Manuel Marquez is a kid who was given a lot of trouble by a mover in the ring, Julian Wheeler, three fights back. In fact, uh, he was down, he was uh, losing that fight down a couple of points in the last round when he managed to stop Wheeler thanks to, uh, well, a very controversial call by Larry Rosadilla, the referee, in that final uh, round of that fight. And it appeared as though he was going to lose on points. But, Tom, it appeared to me as though he had learned his lessons and fought much better against... Uh, guys who were trying to utilize a moving style against him in his last couple of fights, and certainly Julio Gervasio, who just really had no chance that night, even though Gervasio was a former world champion. Well, Cruz will certainly give him a test. He will know what boxing is all about, even if he knocks Cruz out with one punch. Cruz has been around, in fact, uh, making only his second fight in the United States. He lost to Jesse Magana here at the Forum, but um, he fights and loses to awfully good guys. Robinson, Vasquez. He is 34, though. They call him Italian. Does most of his fighting overseas. Dominican from the Dominican Republic. He also a uh, cruise lost to Nassim Hamed a couple of years back. He's a very good boxer, very smart, hard target. But he took Hamed 12 rounds, did he not? I think he may have been stopped, but he wasn't. He wasn't put down by no. by Hamed. No. So he's got a good chin. He can take a punch if you can find him to land it. So far, it has been a very cautious first round, and Cruz obviously knows of the punching power of this young talent, Juan Manuel Marquez, and is very, very careful and respectful of it, I'm sure. Marquez appears to have all the tools of a growing star. He's developing rapidly. Showed great improvement, as I mentioned, following that Wheeler fight. He handled was handled by Nacho Berestein. He throws lots of punches, excellent quickness. He's aggressive, and he's got power. This is scheduled for 10 They're in the featherweight division. Been a very quiet 
first round for these two men. One thing I've noticed in Marquez fights, though, Tom, is that he gets better round by round. He usually improves as the fight goes on. Almost had Cruz uh, trapped for a moment, but he got away. We'll be back with round two. This is round number two. Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue, trimmed in red. Freddy Cruz in the solid uh, black trunks. Cruz has 16 knockouts out of 49 victories. 12 knockouts and 15 wins. Disqualification cost Marquez his first fight. Since then he's won 15 in a row. That was on a headbutt in his first bout, suffering his only loss. When that fight was stopped, he came back to knock out that same fighter in three rounds when they later fought. Marquez has had a history since we've seen him. First half of his career fought strictly in Mexico, but he's following that Marco Antonio Barrera yes. formula. He yep. just left Mexico, came here, got himself a home with foreign boxing, and letting foreign boxing basically handle the, uh, the promotion and uh, getting him experience. We saw him first against Israel Gonzalez, and we were so impressed with him that night in December of 94 at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. And he's been fighting strictly under the auspices of foreign boxing since he came to the U.S. He's had Cruz backing up almost continually since they, right after the introductions. Cruz very elusive and hard to hit and hard to put a glove on in a serious manner. Wildly crafty boxer. 34 years of age, you wonder what kind of shape he'd have to be in to go 10 rounds doing this with this youngster. Marquez is giving him a lot of shoulder feints, stepping forward with his foot, looking at the way that Cruz will move when he feints and when he does certain things. He's studying his opponent right here, Tom, which is nice to see in a young fighter. And, of course, the crowd is um, getting a little irritated at Cruz, who there threw a punch, one of the few he's thrown since the fight started. But his uh, movement, bouncing up and down, dancing away, boxing, eluding. Juan Manuel Marquez doesn't sit well with the fans. And I talked to Antonio Curtis, the matchmaker, tonight before the fight. I said, why would you put Marquez in with a guy like Cruz who can be a real spoiler? He's a, he's a tough guy to look good against. And he says, in the long run, this will be what Marquez needs. You know, it's a, this is the kind of fight where you know, he'll learn a lot in this fight, and he'll learn how to fight these kind of guys. I tell you, Cruz has been very elusive, very hard to hit, slipping, sliding, moving. Marquez hasn't really gotten a clean shot at him. There's a perfect example of it. Most punches thrown, and Cruz just isn't there to be hit. Well, but you must land something yourself in order to win a round, Cruz. Well, I've given the first two rounds to Marquez, but uh, Cruz uh, certainly points up the fact that he is not going to be an easy guy to find. If his leg should go at age 34, or one of you should slow down, Marquez probably will catch him. There's Berestein talking to... Looks like he's teaching right in the corner. Well, he has a unique uh, rapport with his fighters. They, uh, it's almost uh, fatherly. It's almost uh, paternal, the way he talks to them. And uh, they look up and respect his thoughts and ideas. Now, Freddy Cruz. The people handling his corner over there. Well, he's not easily discouraged. That was proven early in his career when his first six fights, he had only one victory. And he's gone on to build up a darn impressive record. He has then. indeed, no question about it. his man Cruz just bouncing away throws two three jabs none of which landed he continues to back away from Marquez and he ties him up Chuck Cassett's the third man in the ring 
Cruz has a good chin, despite the fact that he was down twice against Magana. He doesn't get put down very often either. No. Sticks out about four jabs, none of which landed, and took a right hand sliding away from it, thrown by Marquez. This is round number three. It's scheduled for ten. Most of those punches caught in the right hand glove. Of Cruz backing away. And he's got some real defensive techniques. He really has. Yeah, it's. Uh, Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Fought but once in the United States. Fights in Europe, of course. Mainly Italy. Very cautious here. I think he must have seen that tape of that fight against uh, Julio Gervasio by Juan Manuel Marquez because he's fighting extremely cautiously his crews. Well, it's a, um, a style that is not going to endear him to the fans here at the Great Western Forum. Marquez bangs that left hand to the body. Whistles a left hand that Cruz caught partially on his right elbow. But you know, I, I'm sure he felt some of that power oh, in that shot. I tell you, that smacked pretty good. There's another one. And you can't block them all, or can you? I don't know. We're looking at action in round three. Marquez seems to have found the uh, correct ticket here to winning, you know, and turning the fight in his direction, Tom, which is the left hook to the body, has landed very successfully. in round number four as it starts here. These are featherweights. That's Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. In the solid black trunks, the wily, crafty veteran. He's 34, Freddy Cruz. Marquez is the young man, in case you've just joined us, that has that label of can't miss. Young featherweight who's won 15 in a row, has knocked out 12 of his opponents. Is a definite uh, piece of raw talent that um, seems to get better every time we see him. And he's in against a guy who uh, has seen everything in the ring, Freddy Cruz, and a real trial horse for him. Hanging away to the body. Cruz has not really been much of a force or a factor in this fight. Very elusive, very cautious, very difficult to hit. Whatever punches, or most of whatever punches have been thrown, have been thrown by Marquez. As a result, I've got him winning all the first three rounds. Perhaps Cruz feels he'll start coming on later in the fight, Tom, but the thing is, against Marquez, that's a dangerous type of strategy because Marquez just gets stronger every round. He gets better every round. We've seen that happen with him fight after fight. He just gets better with each succeeding round. around and moving on legs that are 34. He stumbled and Cruz nearly fell down, not from a punch, just their feet got all locked up together. Well, Cruz is making it difficult for Marquez to really shine here in the first three rounds doing anything about winning this fight if indeed that's why he climbed into the ring no this is far different than the julian wheeler episode that marquez found himself faced with because in that fight while wheeler was moving a lot of lateral movements he was moving and jabbing popping marquez with jabs moving around the ring throwing combinations cruz here basically has just been in a complete defensive posture and then 
that Wheeler fight, as you pointed out, why it was just a quirk of fate. And Rosa Dia stopped the fight with five seconds to go, complaining about the fact that Wheeler was holding. Uh, without any warning that he was going to stop the fight, he did. Wheeler was actually ahead on cards, Rich. Yeah, and I thought really that Wheeler deserved to win that fight. Yeah. Marquez working to the body, round four coming to a close. In the four rounds, it's 40-36 in favor of Marquez in Rich Morata's scorebook, which means, of course, that uh, Marquez has won all of the four rounds, getting 10 points for each of the four. A lesser number, in this case, nine to Cruz, making a total of 36. Cruz really has not done much offensively. He's been very clever and adroit, very slippery, very hard to find, very difficult to hit. I'd like to see from Marquez's standpoint, see him go back to that left hook to the body, Tom. I thought it was really successful for him in the third round. He starts off there trying to double up off of that. Yeah, hook come up with an uppercut right off it, and that's not a bad weapon. Some lag behind us between rounds when we're trying to hold up. A pool on whether or not Cruz would throw a serious punch here. What round? He's not, um, he's obviously well schooled. He works to the body, works to the head as well. Cruz threw a punch that uh, was nearly a very effective item. Moment ago, Marquez just did slip away, and there's a left hand by Cruz, who's beginning to show a little more interest in the fight here in round number five. And that's kind of the way that he did it against Magana. Magana built up a big early lead, and Cruz closed the gap coming down the stretch. But that's what he needs to do, get that jab to work. Cruz in the black trunks, and Juan Manuel Marquez in the blue and red. There's an added burden put upon the shoulders of young uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. Everybody says you're going to be a champion. You can't miss. He wants to go out and knock Freddy Cruz out tonight. He just can't find Cruz to knock him out. Try as he might. I'm sure that was the wanted to go out and impress everybody with a big time win here. Marquez, right at least so far, has not found its home. It's see he's missing with that right. That's a big shot for him. He needs to be able to land that one. His left hook has been a pretty good weapon to the body, and his left jab has done well, but his right cross, he needs to follow behind that jab and land that right cross. He'll be in a lot better shape. Now Cruz actually pins Marquez against the ropes for a moment and landed a couple of pretty good right hands. Not devastating, but punches that scored. Chuck Hassett says no holding and hitting. Cruz... Uh, very, very clever. Blocked most of those. Round five coming to a close. And there's the bell, and that brings us to the end of round five. Well, we haven't seen many knockout-type punches here in the five rounds so far in this one, but how about this group of devastating hitters, Roy Jones Jr. You know he's a basketball player too, Mitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, sh we should put a boxer slash point yeah. guard by his name. There seems to be some controversy growing uh, here. Ring Magazine is seriously considering putting De La Hoya as their number one now in the, the pound for pound list. But I, well, I don't know. Until somebody beats Jones, I think De La Hoya uh, modest enough to be right where he is. I like him there with Trinidad and Barrera. Barrera fights Forte. this uh, weekend. Whitaker has dropped down. A lot of people think we're a little too critical of Whitaker, but um, I don't know why he doesn't get in to fight one of those guys, but he hasn't. I think it's a nice list. We'll Old see Hamid. Sharp Johnson huh? there, number 11. Yeah. We'll see him August 5th, right here on Prime at the Forum. Yeah, his first title defense since winning the IBF flyweight title. Up they come for round number six. It's scheduled for 10. We will see what Riddick Bowe does this Thursday night in his fight with Andrew Galata. Madison Square Garden and see if he warrants a reintroduction into our devastating game. Bob, uh, I think Bo's a good heavyweight. I really do. When motivated. And, uh, I just wonder if anybody beside Tyson will motivate the guy. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think he's a bonafide uh, nice left hand by 
Marquez works to the body to try to bring it up to double up with it. But for all the world like Marquez was wide open for that right hand by Cruz but he kind of pulled it up short Rich. I like he could have thrown it and hit Marquez right in the middle of the face with it. Marquez and almost jumping right into Cruz doing that jab. That right continues to miss though by Marquez. Yeah. That's a big weapon for him. You know, as a one-handed fighter, you're going to be a lot less spectacular than if you're, you know, raking your opponent with two hands. But it was that left-right combination, and the right was devastating that knocked uh, his last opponent out in the fight we saw here at the Forum. Gervasio was that, oh boy, a left and a right. The picture perfect. And the right hand just flattened Gervasio. Yeah, and in the fight before that, when he fought uh, Hector Chong here at the Forum on March 4th, he scored two knockdowns in that fight before a fourth round knockout, and both were with clean right hands. We're watching the action in round number six. It has been pretty one-sided. There's a little move by Marquez. Step to the right, come back and throw that left hand. The youngster trying to teach the wily, crafty veteran a thing or two. So far, Cruz has been content to be in a defensive mode. Boxing beautifully. Marquez has not been impatient tonight. I think his, his patience has been impressive. He's not gone crazy wild. He hears the boos from the fans. He's not getting upset. He's just following through with the fight plan and looking to box his man. Good left hand. It might have been a little bit low, and Cruz indicated as much. Chuck Hassett caution Marquez to bring it up. But I think Marquez um, realizes that he's got a partisan crowd here and that uh, the boos are not for him. I'm sure that uh, he would love to have Cruz make a toe-to-toe -to -toe out of this. I don't know if that is Cruz's intent at all. So far, it doesn't indicate that. So round six coming to a close. Scheduled for 10. We'll be back after this. Round number seven, scheduled for 10. Featherweights, Manuel Marquez, excuse me, Juan Manuel Marquez. In the blue, trimmed in red. Freddy Cruz in the solid black. It has been a uh, cat and mouse game. Cruz so far evasive and slippery, wild, crafty, consummate boxer. Marquez unable to get a real shot at him, has not been able to hurt him, but whatever punches of substance have been thrown, have been thrown by Marquez. I hope that Cruz showed up to try to fight and win tonight. He so far hasn't given much of an indication of that. He could, you know, change tactics here in the second half of the bout, but he's lost every round certainly so far, Tom. And I would think so. He's almost to the point of needing a knockout to win. Yes. Or some very big rounds. Which I think would obviously, boy, they clashed heads together. I don't see blood coming anywhere from uh, the forehead of Cruz. Chuck Hassett says, let's get out of it, but Marquez indicated with a show of pain on his face that uh, he felt it. Yeah, it looked like a bump rose right immediately on his forehead, Tom. Kind of a slapping left hand by Marquez. Well, if Cruz dances, slips and slides and moves away for 10 rounds, it's a testimony to great conditioning on a set of 34-year-old legs that has been around a long time. Marquez is trying to find his man for one solid shot to slow him down long enough to level some leather at him. Right hand by Cruz. Yeah, that one had some serious intentions on it for the first time, I think. You know, he's had an opportunity to throw that punch a couple of times at Marquez, and he's almost thrown it halfway a couple of times, pulled it up short the time he let it go. Let's that jab go. If Cruz steps to his right and throws that right hand right over the top of it, he can score with it. Marquez has got a pretty good jab. He snaps it out 
They're pretty strong, Tom, and a lot of times he'll throw it out, not just once, but throw two jabs out and try to follow it in. Unfortunately for him, his right has not been there tonight, but he's been doing most of his damage with his left. Another right hand by Cruz. Somewhat effective punch for him here. His time is running out in round number seven. We'll be back to see about round number eight after this. of heads in round number seven between the two fighters there you see them come together interestingly enough there was some slight blood from the left eye as i mentioned in that round by uh, marquez and chuck hassett has told the judges he's calling a headbutt there but i really didn't think the headbutt opened up the cut i didn't either i, I saw a bump go up immediately on the forehead of uh, marquez. marquez but uh, i don't think it's going to come into effect anyway in this fight. no it's i don't very either small cut yeah. very small This is round number eight, scheduled for ten. Now Cruz has got to get busy here. He, he tripled up on his jab a few moments ago, which is a good start. Crowd continues to be highly critical of Freddy Cruz. Well, it's disappointing. I'm sure many of these fans either were in attendance or watched on television that night at the Anaheim Park. And you see Juan Manuel Marquez in that scintillating performance against Julio Gervasio, and you say, man, I want to go see them. When this guy yeah. fights again, I'm yeah. rushing down there and seeing them. I want to see this. Well, they all came down here, and they were hoping for that kind of a performance, and Cruz has not given Marquez really the opportunity to be that kind of a fighter here tonight. It takes two to tango, and despite the best efforts of Cruz and uh, how well-intentioned he is by uh, Cruz and... Um, Marquez, I should say. Cruz is just not uh, not going to allow him that kind of an evening. The crowd thought that he was going to stand and exchange punches with this hard-hitting youngster. That would be mistaken. In fact, as you pointed out earlier, Rich, that Marquez has not lost his cool or composure. I think it's a credit to him and to the people in his corner. Because there's a pretty good left hand right at the midsection. It'd be easy to become frustrated and just kind of lose your head and go crazy out there. Sure, he's only 22 years old and he wants to look impressive and he wants to build a following. And he wants to be like Marco Antonio Barrera, who's so popular in these parts right now. There's a little more show of blood there in the corner of the left eye. Manuel Marquez. Referee Chuck Hassett has indicated a headbutt is responsible for it. Coming to the close of round number eight, it is scheduled for ten. Cruz making a bit more of an evening out of it here. Round. It's scheduled for ten. Ten seconds remain. And we'll be back to see about the final two rounds. Number nine coming up in a moment. Scheduled for 10, he's a featherweight. That's Freddy Cruz in the black. And the blue trimmed in red, Juan Manuel Marquez. Looking for a 16th in a row. He's got a record of 15 and 1. Cruz has been here, there, and everywhere. Unbelievable fine record, 49 and 8 with 7 draws. each one of them. Billy Cruz quit holding and hitting, and he uh, also cautioned or warned Marquez about the low blow. Boy, that may be this. <laughs> South of Tijuana by about 200 miles, wasn't it? Well, maybe he just lost his patience for a moment. Well, it there. could be. It could be, but... Uh, maybe he just thought, well, let me give you one thing to remember yeah. me by. Take something back to your corner. <laughs> Marquez suddenly ended up fighting as a southpaw. But I think the boxing skills of Cruz might have been very evident to you there. Marquez advanced, looked as though he might have a shot at him, and Cruz just bounced, weaved, slipped away, and Marquez never really got to put any serious leather on him. is 
Bagley on a defensive uh, maneuver tonight. Covers up, slips back. Slapping left hand by Cruz. The right hand got close by Marquez. It kind of grazed the side of the head of Cruz, who's been very wary of that right hand tonight and seems to have built a defense around avoiding that right hand all night if he can. Would have liked to see more body work from Juan, Man Juan Manuel. Well, even when he does get Cruz in what you think would be an ideal spot to hit him a few times, Cruz, to his credit, I'll tell you. When this guy move, slip and slide, be something. To the dismay of the crowd, why, that's not what they want. course it uh, barring a complete turnaround by Cruz and he doesn't have that many rounds left this is the night White's going to put him in for his ninth loss in a long career well round 10 yet to be fought we'll be back to see about it in a moment in the black. Juan Manuel Marquez in blue. I don't think there's a question. Unless I've been looking at the wrong five, but what Marquez has won this affair tonight, Rich. Yeah, you know, I was more impressed with Cruz in the Jesse Magana fight. Even though he was knocked down twice in that fight, Tom, he tried to win that fight. Yeah. You know, and he came on late and made it a very good fight. And made it a close fight. And he showed up with victory in mind that night. Tonight, he showed up in what appears to me with a paycheck. Yeah. Well, I do have to uh, marvel at his ability. He's been doing this for 10 rounds on 34-year-old legs. The man's in magnificent shape and condition, obviously. And he certainly knows his way around the, the ring. Marquez bouncing up and down. The lure, I'm sure, Cruz into making some kind of a wrong move. It is a testament, though, to the singular defensive skills of Cruz that Marquez has not been able to land one significant right hand of meaning here this evening. And very few. Oh, there it is, though. That was one of them. And Cruz said, no, I didn't get knocked. It's a moot point. It finally happened. Oh boy, he says I'm not hurt, but he did get, he went down, and despite his protest, does he think this is going to uh, take a win away from him? I don't think he was in any shape to win the fight anyway. I mean, in the judges' cards. Well, I'll tell you, he spent nine, nine rounds stepping away from that right hand, and now with just under a minute to go in round. So patient for nine rounds and two minutes and finally we're rewarded with a solid right hand shot that saw Marquez knock Freddy Cruz in the back of his lap. Yeah I think Marquez was a lot more patient than his fans tonight. Well, I'm sure he's glad he was at least able to close the show with a flare here on the 10th round. Yes. Just seconds remain. Marquez. Nice mixture there. There's the bell, and it's over. <laughs> that was some bad feeling over what went on in that ring. I'm what? sure. I'm sure. The official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games, this Bud's for you. While we await the official decision, 
We're very thankful for Ramon Hurtado and Hector Chavez. What a fight <laughs> they gave us. Uh, that was terrible. The light flyweights. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got the official decision. Jimmy, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges score the bout 100 to 89 in favor of the winner, Juan Manuel Marquez. 100 to 89 on all the cards. It was a one-sided thing. You talk about a Kofax shutout. That was really one of them here in the ring tonight. A one-sided affair, and um, Juan Manuel Marquez now goes to 16 and 1, and a disappointing performance for Freddy Cruz. Well. prediction that is, is would he be susceptible to a punch has he really ever taken a good punch all heavyweights are susceptible to punches this is the heavyweight division one punch can change a fight around you look at Jimmy Young right now your thoughts well my thoughts this is a typical boxing match the KG veteran with all the experience against the young kid on the way up in my opinion youth will be served all right the heavyweights and a fight that many boxing observers are looking closely at because Jerry Cooney is finally getting an opponent who and weighs in at 223 pounds even. He's ranked number six in the world by the WBC.